All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of On the Bench, jb and Today. I can't remember which one I'm doing. we had too many in one day. Hey, look, today's going to be really fun. We're, we're talking about cameras, and we're talking about PTZ cameras, but more importantly, uh, we're also going to talk about uh, auto-tracking cameras and how fun these can be. So, Because you never know when the person is going to move around and, and not stand still uh, during the presentation. So it helps to have a way to follow them. So as always, um, ask your questions in the chat window or in the question window. We will get to them towards the end, but ask them when they come to your mind, because if you don't, you might forget them later. Uh, there is a handout on the interface. So if you go down to the handouts um, portion, open that up, you'll see we've got a handout there. Uh, so make sure you grab that one before the end of the show because it will disappear and and never be available again. I'm just kidding. We can we can always send it to you if you request it. Um, uh, let's see. Oh yes, for questions um, after the show, as always, hit us up at 415-256-2800. Um, and right now, because of COVID, you'll hit the entire company from their home offices since they're all over the country right now. Loads of fun if you want to play ring tag. Um, admit that one. Um, you can also hit us at sales at J Banda. So pricing, stocking questions, any of that. Or if you just want to find out what's for dinner, um, email that. Oh, I'm going to make somebody angry with that one. Okay, today's going to be fun. We've got um, the folks from Aver with us. Rich Moscoso. I see. I told you, Rich. I'd blow it. <laughs> um, Moscoso. I can get this right. I Very can good. be a winner. Um, is here to talk about the PTZ options and the camera options from Aver. Oh wait, here. You know what? Let's uh, actually boom. All right, we'll come back to this. Um, so we're gonna talk about the um, the PTZ options from Aver, what you guys have, what you're doing. Rich, uh, before we go into that, tell us a little about Aver if somebody has never heard of you guys, which, how could that be? But let's talk about it anyway. Who is sure, so, so, so Aver Media has been around for quite a while, right? About 30 years. And Aver Information Inks, um, they have a, they started out with uh, more like K through 12 universities, dot cams, that sort of thing. Now we're in the pro AV and we're branching out. We, and in the pro AV segment, we have um, a couple different lines of, of PTZ cameras as well as, which has basic tracking cameras. And then we have the more advanced TR series, which offers more advanced tracking. So depending on what the need is, right? What the environment is, um, we have a couple different cameras for that. Got it. And and from a company standpoint, I mean, how, how long has Aver been around? Are we talking 20 years, 30 years? I mean, is this a... Uh, I mean, so yeah, so Aver, so Aver Media has been around for 30 years, 1990. Nice. Yep, and then it branched off in the Aver Information Inc. Um, I wanna say in 2011, 2010, somewhere around there. Did you ever think somebody would say 1990 is 30 years ago? I mean, <laughs> what is that? No, mean? we were all like six years old, so. Yeah, well, of course, thank you. Yes, <laughs> I will take that. Um, well, hey, you know what? I think you've got some slides to share, so why don't you pop those do. up on screen? Um, and let's roll through that. And then, um, you know, folks, again, as you think of questions, type them in. We're going to get to them at the end, and we're going to you know, do some Q&A, and we'll probably show you some of the technology at the same time, because um, that's the way we roll on this show. All right, Rich, take it away. All right, can everyone see that there? It's coming. Whoop. Are you kidding me? Are we good? Oh yeah, yeah, you're you're showing. All right, very good. So yeah, it's building your long-term video strategy with the right PTZ live streaming camera. Um, where are we at here? So we'll do an overview of the Pro AV solutions. Um, an important thing is the understanding equipment and integration issues that you may come across, either as an end user or an integrator. Um, setting up your live video streaming, um, as you know, with the state of the nation as it is and, and what we're faced, a lot of organizations, uh, house of worship, uh, companies now have to do uh, everything remote, right? So, so video streaming has become a priority high up on the list. Um, and some organi organizations have been doing it, and some, this is brand new, they have no idea where to start, what to look for, et cetera. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. And then top things to consider when selecting a new PTZ type camera. So a couple different, um, as mentioned, you know, product lines that we have in Pro AV. So we have the PTZ 310 and 330. Um, they also, that series also comes with an N, annotation which um, 
stands for the NDI type protocol. So it does handle full HD 1080p 60. The 310 offers 12x, the 330 offers 30 times optical zoom, and has four simultaneous outputs for uh, either streaming or HDMI. There's a 3G SDI output and then a USB output directly connected or a connection directed direct to the PTZ camera. And we do, um, it does control, has VSCA and non vif control as well as a VSCA over IP. The more advanced uh, TR cameras, the TR320 and 530, um, offer auto tracking. Um, as mentioned, the PTZ does have a tracking, but it's it's more basic, right? It's more segmental. And the advanced TR series has uh, three, can have up to three auto tracking modes, right? Uh, the TR530 offers a wide uh, stage and segment type tracking, where the TR320 offers just a wide type tracking. So 22x or 30x optical zoom. Um, it does have two camera lenses, uh, your PTZ lens and your main PTZ lens, and then a panoramic on the base, uh, which offers a 120 degree uh, viewing angle or field of view. Um, that's mainly used for um, for capturing the tracking algorithms, right? Uh, but there are instances where, say, a house of worship wants to to cut away to to a panel, you know, broader view of the uh, the audience for maybe three four seconds, and then they'll cut to a different camera for a close up view. We also have a, a new product, the AW 200 4K wireless presentation system. Uh, it has a receiver and uh, two AP 200 pods, and this is a way to actually transmit um, either HDMI uh, video uh, wirelessly. So from from your mobile device or computer, you can transmit to the receiver wirelessly uh, up to 4K resolution. You can also do it uh, connect to the uh, receiver wirelessly from uh, from your from your mobile device without the need for a pod, and um, and also transmit that way. We also in the in the Pro AV <coughs> segment we have uh, the CLO1, <coughs> excuse me, professional camera controller. It offers pan tilt zoom speed control of uh, up to. It shows seven cameras, but this controller um, actually can contr control up to 255 separate cameras if needed. Um, you can adjust the brightness, color, and focus on the fly. Uh, multiple control interfaces for RS-232, 422, 485, and um, IP. So, so one of the things that we get asked a lot is, you know, which camera should we use, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and a valid response to that, well, it depends. It depends on, on where the installation of the camera is going to be. What is your environment? Um, obviously, a, a video conferencing room type setup will differ from, say, an auditorium or a house of worship where the camera may be uh, 35, 40, 50 feet away from the presenter or from the pastor or from whomever's on stage. So this, this, um, this slide here kind of shows you what you're getting with 12x optical zoom, right? Um, at 100 feet. So our cardboard cutout model here, she's five foot four, uh, to give you some uh, some idea of what we're looking at. Um, so this is what 12x looks like at 100 feet, and this is what 22 times looks like look like at 100 feet, and then 30x, um, which is offered on our TR 530 camera. Um, and this this visual kind of gives you a better idea of like. Um, you know, especially setting up tracking, um, you want to have a good line of sight, obviously, um, and then con conditions can change. So if it's a little bit darker, you want to have an option to be able to track in that when when the environment's a bit darker, it may be not so ideal. So TR530 web interface IP streaming. Um, so if you're new to this, right, you you have some questions like what what do I need for throughput? 
Um, and this is just some information I grabbed from Facebook uh, because, you know, depending on your network environment, right? Some, a lot of people now are, are just buying up um, wireless access points, you know, through the home and trying to connect. But um, you got to make sure that the throughput is going to be able to handle the stream, right? So if it's a, a church um, that is just using their local, um, say, spectrum internet, you, you know, do they have at least 200 megabits per second type uh, ISP connection? Where in corporate America, you know, you, you probably have, or in other companies, you might have fiber coming right up to the door um, and throughput's not really an issue. But but some things to keep in mind are, you know, recommended max bit rate, uh, it's four megabits per second, uh, audio bit rate, you know, 96 or 128, uh, keep the resolution max at 1080p, 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames a second. Um, an iframe or keyframe will be sent every two seconds. This is more ha has to do with the um, the encoding of video, right? A lot of people don't have to worry about that because it's already kind of baked in there. But but something that's uh, recommended by by Facebook in this case. Uh, titles uh, fewer than 255 characters, so you know keep it straight and to the point. Um, and H.264 encoded video and AAC encoded audio only. Now, obviously, different platforms may have, <clears throat> excuse me, different platforms may have some some different recommendations, but this is this is a pretty good baseline here. So, with deal, dealing with audio, um, you want to make sure that um, so there's a different there's many different ways to handle audio, right? So. Um, so in the case of our cameras, the PTZ and TR series, we do offer an audio line in, and, and this offers you the flexibility to put in a powered microphone or powered mixer um, as part of the stream. So you would just connect the uh, three and a half millimeter powered mic um, uh, straight in to the camera, and then that, that audio that you're capturing will be part of the stream. It's a good solution for, you know, again, uh, organizations, house of worship, even even um, places like uh, exercise places like uh, hot yoga, uh, jujitsu. These these organizations or, or companies are, you know, they're trying to to work with the new norm. So they need something that's, uh, they, they, you know, there's not a lot of um, available monies, right, for to invest in say DSPs that that will handle audio, so they need something pretty flexible and pretty quick to the point. So so these cameras offer audio in, <clears throat> and it's also good to have as, as a backup as well. So you may have the more advanced rooms, right, where you have audio DSPs and controllers and all this sort of thing. If something should should fail, at least you have this as a backup as well. TR530 integration and IP streaming, um, understanding equipment and integration issues. Um, so again, is the recommended camera on-site appropriate for the environment it's being installed in? Um, I mentioned this earlier, where, where perhaps you know advanced, adva ad excuse me, advanced tracking is 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 very good in in say house of worship or corporate uh, type training environment, cameras a bit far away, maybe 50, 60 feet away. But do you really need that in a video conference room that's maybe, you know, 10 by 15 or 10 by 12, um, where a PTZ camera might, might better fit that environment, right? Is it a conference room, a training type environment, house of worship, auditorium? Are you gonna be broadcasting this stream? Um, understand the customer where are they coming from are they new to streaming are they upgrading equipment um, get a better feel of, of where they're coming from right uh, one of the features in in youtube that i like in the youtube studio is uh, and even facebook live is that there's a, a preview mode so you can set up your framing um, you can actually do audio checks before you actually go live right so um, i believe in the original YouTube classic view. I think I think once you hit 
uh, streaming, you were streaming. Um, but in this in this later version of YouTube Studio uh, and even Facebook Live, you you can actually have the preview and program out like like you would in a in a typical broadcast booth, right? You set up your preview shot, make sure everything's set up, and then you go to program out. Um, setting up your live video streaming. Uh, as mentioned, make sure you have uh, audio input <clears throat> for streaming. Um, so there's a couple ways you can stream. Um, I, what I call like direct streaming, which is direct from the camera. And as long as that camera has uh, a network connection that has access to the internet, you can direct you can directly stream from the camera out to say Vimeo or Facebook or YouTube. Um, you just have to grab that URL and that stream key, you know, copy paste it into the camera, say connect, and you can stream direct from from Aver's uh, Pro AV cameras. Um, some of the more uh, it's called more sophisticated setups, you know, they they may take just take video direct from the camera into a switcher, and then from the switcher they'll stream or use some other piece of software to stream out to their different uh, platforms. Um, even schools, right? Universities, um, they use Panopto, Echo 360. Um, uh, so they have different ways to, to manage and record all that. So again, um, diff different softwares like OBS and VMix, and uh, I just have a last bullet point there of bandwidth concerns with the ISP. So again, if you're streaming, and uh, as many companies or organizations that are, you know, either family owned or just getting into this, uh, you know, make sure you have at least 200 megabits per second uh, or better, right? I've done some tests here and, and that's where I'm at is at 200 megabits per second uh, downloads and 10 meg up. Um, hopefully you have better than that. Um, also, Take into consideration some USB applications that are needed or could be needed because um, so you do want to stream, but maybe you also want to use this. It's a multi-purpose room. You want to use it for not only just streaming, but but as some sort of video conferencing, right? Um, so with both cameras, the TRs series and PTZ series, um, the PTZ has a direct USB connection and it goes straight into your computer and then you can run your Zoom, um, go to meeting, Teams, what have you, uh, direct from the camera that way. Uh, the TR series does not have a direct USB, so to take into consideration the way you want to convert that to USB. So you could either use uh, HDMI or SDI and then convert it to USB. Um, typically, I, I I always go towards SDI because it, the, the connection is, is <clears throat> has a twist lock type connection, and um, when you're when you're running cable from here and there, you want to make sure that that connection is going to be um, going to be tightly secure. You don't want to have that as a loose connection. HDMI is good as well. It's just a, there's no locking mechanism for that. Um, so we've been streaming with, as I mentioned before, Kaltura, YouTube, Zoom, Panopto, Telestream, and we have documentation for for how to set up the cameras to actually um, connect with all these different uh, softwares and services. So some things to consider when selecting a new PTZ camera. Live streaming readiness, the whole world is streaming video. Um, you wanna be able to have multiple outputs for at least uh, an HDMI connection or an SDI, or at least have uh, an IP connection for RTSP or RTMP. Uh, features and options to consider. Um, is auto tracking high on the list or is that is that more of a want or is it a need? Um, all choices will be weighed against your needs, budget, and skill level of your operators. Um, you know, some organizations ha have the luxury of of having someone sit in there to to make sure 
everything on the technical side is running well, right? Whereas in other situations, <clears throat> it's a one-man show. Uh, they need to be able to, to set it up, hit click, enable tracking, and then walk away and just make sure that, that it's, uh, it's going to do what, what it's going to do. Integration with supporting AV technologies. Will it work in your setup? So uh, consider connection options or supported software platforms or streaming solutions. Um, so you may be upgrading, you may be, you may be again, new to everything. So, so there's diff, se definitely several options to, uh, to take into consideration as far as um, for tracking and streaming and um, doing video conferencing. So Aver's company expertise and longevity, we're not just another new kid on the block. Um, we've been around for many years delivering video and collaboration products from hardware and software and support. We have warranty and support. <clears throat> does the warranty program stand out? So does that, you need to make sure you, we can check that box, right? We have three year warranty with a 24 hour, 24 hour quick replacement turnaround with localized support. And then for more information or questions, if you go to our website, you can download the complimentary copy of the white paper. I believe we, we may have that um, on how to select the right PTZ camera for live streaming events, five things you need to consider. So I thank you. And I don't know if we're gonna do some live demos here, Nick? I think we should. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's, um... So where should we start? I know you've got a little bit of a studio set up on your side and um, a couple of things. Sure. Well, one, let's grab a question because the question did come in. I want to make sure okay. we capture those. Um, and this one was um, about responsiveness. So the question from the, um, the audience was, what is the time it takes to go from full wide all the way into a Zoom? And what are the transitions that we see between uh, presets? Sure. Um, can you still see my screen? I sure can. Yep. And and I'm in it. <laughs> yeah, so um I forget the exact spec number. Uh but it's certain amount of degrees, but we can actually uh create a preset, right? So if we go to preset here and say we zoom in here. So let's just call this, uh, I have some other, let's see, call it number 25. And then, call this number 24. So I may have this on slow, I have to check this, let's see. Now, so the, we do have some pan tilt speeds, right? So if you feel it's the pan or tilt's going a little slower, a little fast, we have toggles for that. And then for zoom speed, we have low and and high. Let's make sure that's there. So to, to give you some some idea, you know, I'm standing six feet from the camera, um, and that's fully out right there. So I don't have an exact number. I I don't know if Andy's on the line. Maybe he can. It's a certain amount of there's, degrees. There's some flexibility. Or, I mean, um, yeah. You know, watching how quickly we can jump in and out of these shots. Um, I guess it's it's going to go to those speed and sensitivity settings and how fast you make them. Sure. How yeah. many uh, how many presets do you store in camera, or how many can you have? So looking at that, that's a pretty big number down there. It it's a big number. Uh, it's uh, 255. Uh, so you have pages of presets, is what you have. Yes. Yeah, you have pages of preset. Um, good question. I'm it's it's asked, but yes, it's um. You definitely have enough. Um, okay, so one of the ones I want to talk about, I think you, you have one very interesting feature that you don't see on a lot of cameras um, in the tracking camera, and that is multiple outputs. 
Um, and so it's something I'm, so I'm gonna turn on mine um, because I, I want everybody to see what I'm talking about here. So there is a picture in picture mode that you can output on uh, the, yep. the the advanced tracking ones. So I'm yep. gonna turn that on and it's going to, oh, did I turn you on? You're still, yeah, you're still on zero. To go, yeah, go down when you. Oh, I didn't. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm I, on zero. There you go. So yep. I like this one here was the one I wanted to pull up. Okay. So in the lower right hand corner is um, is the other camera. So on these um, the the TR series, the tracking ones, there is a second camera in the base of the unit. Um, and unfortunately, I can't show it to you because it's over there, but that is creating this wide angle box that you see here in the lower right hand side. Um, and that is the big picture. That is the actual tracking camera. Now, other people have that in their cameras, but not all of them give you an output to view it. Now, specifically on this camera, there are three outputs. There's two SDI and an HDMI output. So that gives us the ability to kind of control, well, if I want the wide angle, let's say we're doing that gym experience and we want a nice wide shot of the gym so you can see everybody, it literally, you get two cameras for the price of one because you get access to that extra lens, um, you know, which I think is a really great feature set. Now I'm doing it pip right now because I, I didn't have time to cable up both outputs and set them up, but you yeah. obviously could ISO each of these out the different outputs or um, control which one goes out the HDMI or like I've got here, which is the pit mode, which gives you both. Yeah. Um, and, but you can see this is what actually is, oh, I didn't turn on tracking. Yeah. Oh, there we go. This is what yeah. actually is letting the camera know where I go in the frame and how mm -hmm. it's going to keep up with me as I move around the room. Sure. Yeah. One other that I, I thought was really interesting is when you come towards the camera, that it actually keeps frame and keeps you know, Absolutely. That frame yeah. design that you set yeah. up. Um, mm -hmm. And if if you jump to the tracking settings, yeah, the um, the object viewing dimension I think is is, is yep. really cool because it gives you that ability to decide, kind of define what is that box, what is that area that I want to keep my shot into. Exactly. Yep. You can frame it up the way you know if you have too much headroom or not enough, um, you can tweak it that way. And that's the and that's what we have the three different modes you know wide area stage and segment uh, where wide area actually is, is using both lenses right the PTZ for facial detection and then it's also using the panoramic for motion and then stage and segment you know stage is when the camera's a bit further back so face detect is is not used because it's more difficult right now the person's face is is you know three millimeters wide or what have you. So stage and segment are, are based on motion, whereas the wide area is used on uh, with, with the PTZ lens and the panoramic. So for stage, it would be more setting up. Uh, is that similar to segment in where you can set up the segments on the stage and track the person through those? Or is no. it just saying stay within the staging area? Yeah, so in stage mode, um, it's more when the your camera's perhaps a bit further back, you know, 50, 60 feet. Um, and it's a bit darker, so you, the face isn't isn't as pronounced, right? As as say in a well lit area where the camera's a bit closer, like 25, 30 feet. So then it's you can set it up to be, you know, you can select your effective zone, right? And say I want this area to be where I want to track, right? And that's how that's set up. So anything that walks in this area, I want to be able to track. It's going to stick with that one. Yeah. And then you just select save and and then you, you could set up a, a shielded zone. So if, for instance, um, there was, say, a, a display here, right, with some looping video or, or projection with some video being displayed at a show or, or whatnot, or a fan that's oscillating back and forth, you can block those areas out uh, as needed or add them and say, hey, don't pay attention to this um, because that's adding motion to the frame and I don't want you to pay attention to that. So you can mask it out, select save. Which is funny because when we first got on this call this morning, I was setting mine up, it was catching yeah. the ceiling fan. Yep. Uh, was, and that was driving the camera crazy. It was like, hold yep. on, get back to my ceiling cam. Yeah, you, yeah, you oh, could mask oh, that out. Yeah. Really and then again, it, yeah, go ahead. No, you first. Yeah, and then, and then to lastly, to to finish off the target tracking body, you would then select the body, right? So in, in this case, it, you know, I'm like 
waist up essentially um, because I have these tables kind of in front. So this is good. Uh, or you could do knees up if it's all you see is the person, right? So, so you're giving this dimension to the camera to say, hey, this is my tracking um, target. That would be it, really. And then segment, I don't know if I, I explained segment, but segments based more on um, not so much the presenter, but it's it's um, it's where the, when the content's more important than the presenter. So mm -hmm. the camera will move from one preset to another and then do a PTZ depending on how you set up that, that segment. So if I'm presenting some material, um, say on a hinge, uh, Say I'm on a hinge over here. Oops, didn't mean to go there. Uh, where am I at? So here, here, effective zone. If let me reset this. So if I say, all right, so this is my area, right? And I I have a hinge over here. I want to talk about. I have some technology here. I want to talk about. And this piece of art. Let me reset this a little bit bigger here. This piece of art over here. I want to talk about. I can segment this into different blocks so two three or four blocks um we'll just say three right so it gives you it just divides it in thirds right and it reserves preset six preset seven and preset eight and you can actually adjust these areas um, as needed so you may say well preset six i want uh something like this preset seven if i can grab the edge and having some mouse difficulties. Okay, something like that. Preset eight looks fine. I'll say next. Oops. And then uh, so I'm on preset seven. So as mentioned, you know, I'm looking at this here. I want to talk about this technology here. Um, that looks good. I'll save that. Number six. We have this. Uh, ever important hinge here, you know, it comes in aluminum and brass and whatnot. I want to talk about I'm that. Well, bronze, by the way, did you have Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I, over here, I, we have this question from earlier, which is how fast we can move from um, position to position. That camera is whipping around between those shots very, very quickly. Right now. Yep. And then we'll save that. Yes, exactly. Uh, so that's num number eight. I'll do a quick check. Number seven is here kind of zoom out and then number six we zoom back in here so i'm going to say finish and i'll come here i'm just changing this view so it makes sense because this is the panoramic gives you everything yep. so now i'm gonna so i'm here discussing this hinge and then i want to come over here and then talk about well this hinge comes in several different colors and here they are and then I'll come over here and and kind of finish up here. So you could see already, you know, for classroom, yeah. uh, wherever, uh, how this segment mode works. No, and I think for, for our partners out there, I mean, as, as the education world is deciding whether they're gonna be completely remote or they're gonna be hybrid, this is a camera that can drop in and not replace your camera operators, but at least augment the workflow so that you know a teacher can present and not have to worry about a huge staff standing behind them. Um, now, an, an interesting point I wanted to talk about um, uh, was the from a installation standpoint in deciding how this camera. So the wide angle camera that you're viewing in in the corner of my screen is actually positioned on the bottom of the mount, so that changes how these cameras have to be installed. Um, and effectively not upside down. Um, Correct. Yeah. You know, so if you want to talk about that for a minute from the installation standpoint, what is required from an installation? Yeah, so that's a good point. So the PTZ line, we we can, um, uh, where am I at? Can you still see my screen? Is that still? Yeah, still coming through loud and clear. Sure. Okay. Um, where am I at? Uh, so here. So as you mentioned, uh, two cameras, panoramic, whatnot. Um, it cannot be mounted upside down, so like a ceiling, right? Upside down or flipped. But we do have offer a camera mount um, for this, right? So you can you can 
install from a ceiling or from a wall, but just keep in mind it still has to maintain that vertical or with the base. Now the PTZ, what, yeah, go ahead. What is the optimal height? Because that's one of some of the things we've discussed over time is there is an optimal height that you want that camera at to be Correct. able to track well. Yeah. So as you see here, it's not exactly, uh, you know, direct zero degrees, but it's actually up yeah. from me. Um, so the anywhere between six feet and eight feet is the ideal. Yeah. So for so for those of you out there thinking about you know the the planning of the installation, keep these things in mind. It's not going to be a camera that's going to go upside down, and it's it is going to be a camera that wants to be higher in the room. Um, yeah. You know, in order to really enable these tracking features, which like in our case here, I've got mine. I mean, I'm short, so I don't have to put it up near as high. I've got it around six feet, and it's still got a relatively good angle where I can make face contact with the audience, and the and it's doing a good job of tracking me around the room, um, in my, even in my relatively small room, because I'm like you, I got a about a 10 by 10 here. Nice. Um, and, and as mentioned, the the PTZ line, it, you can actually install that one upside down. So. Got it little more flexibility on that one. Now of the three different tracking areas, the wide area, the stage, and the segment, do can they operate at the same time or do you choose which one you that is the best for the opportunity? Sure. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely you would you would set it up uh depending on which environment you're in, right? So this environment, the segment, uh where the content's more important. Stage if you're a bit further back, lighting's a little low face tracking isn't really gonna work that well. And then wide is where it's a well-lit area, the camera's maybe 30 feet away, 40 feet away. Um, and then you get that depth tracking as well as multi-presenter. Got it. Yeah. And then, so then, you know, as we're, we're, I think we're yeah, we're kind of at the, the bottom of the hour here, just a little bit faster, yep. we're doing pretty good. Um, yeah. And from a question and answer standpoint, I think we've hit just about everything everybody's asked. We're looking good on that side. Yeah. Outside of the traditional PTZ cameras, you guys have a little bit broader range as well. Um, some fixed cameras with microphones for huddle spaces. I mean, is there anything you want the the team to be aware of? You know, or, or the the audience to say like, hey, we're we're more than just PTZs, right? And and some wireless yeah. transmitters. Mm hmm. Um, so yes, yeah, so I mean th there are definitely other products. I'm I'm focused more on the Pro AV, but um, there's definitely more cameras geared right for your video conferencing needs, uh, wireless presentation, right? Here's my home, <laughs> and then K through 12 Maybe. education and and higher you know higher education, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, dot cams. No, and I think I think it's important for, you know, for our partners to understand this, that you're not buying into a company with one product. You guys really are looking organically oh, at the bigger environments. Absolutely. Um, and how to yeah. fill all the shoes. So, yeah. And yeah, no, we have several, so, several different segments, if you will, to fit your so needs, just, depending on where you're at. By the way, I've never held so still in my life as I try to with this camera, and then it thinks I'm dead and it moves away from me. It's just like, oh, this guy's gone, so I'm gonna back off. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it will do that. Yeah, it's a lot <laughs> it'll of fun. Send, it, it'll, it'll sense nothing and say, well, I'm gonna go to my home position, so. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, I, uh, this is my home position right here. <laughs> and we'll come back to this side. Let's talk about what's on the shelf today. I got it. Sheldon and uh, now, now it's really, it's a lot of fun to use this camera and I think it really changes dynamically the ability to give somebody some freedom instead of being stuck in front of the mic like I normally yeah. am. Uh, it, it just opens up that freedom to move around and, and be a little more sure. flexible. So yeah. it's a no, great I agree. camera for that. All right, well, I think we kind of hit the hour. Uh, there are no other major questions that have come in, so we're gonna wrap it up. Rich, thank you much for being here. Andy, thanks for being on the, uh, the panel side in case we had any questions, but Rich and I pulled it off. Yay. Oh, wow, yay. Uh, well, thanks, Nick, that. appreciate it. Um, as always, everybody, if there's questions, feel free to hit us up at the details on the screen. You got the email, you got the phone number, Facebook, if you're a Facebooker, uh, YouTube, if you're a YouTuber, we're, we're everywhere you wanna be. Um, so go ahead and hit us up with more details. Rich, if they wanna get a hold of you, what's the best way? Email, rich.moscoso at aver.com. 
Perfect. All right, that's been our episode. You can catch this one on the tube in a matter of days if you want to. Oh, hold on, Laura jumped in. We've got a question, almost cut it off. And then uh, let's see, dun, 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 dun. hold on, let me read this one. When evaluating cameras, is there a formula available to see if the camera has the right lens and image sensor? Um, when looking at projectors, and so they're kind of comparing this projectors that we know with a projector based on the room, based mm -hmm. on um, the you know the the brightness in the room, the ambient light, kind of how bright we want to be. So the question was, is there formulas to allow people to choose the right camera and the right um, sensor for what you're tr you know, they're trying to achieve? Yeah, good question. I'm I'm not sure. There probably is somewhere, you know, in, in cameras in general, um, but with Aver. I, I have not come across it. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. <laughs> got it, got it. And yeah, yeah, and I would say from a from a lensing standpoint, that slide you put up earlier, kind of choosing the, you know, based on the 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 distance of the person. And you know, I, I guess this would take one from the photography world, right? I mean, we kind of know based on focal length and lens um, sensor, there are some apps available that kind of yeah. utilize those algorithms to say, based on the sensor size, based on the focal length of the lens, here's mm -hmm. what you can expect to achieve. Um, yeah. So um, Jonathan Epner, my Northeast sales guy, has got a couple apps that he he kind of rolls to that give you that option to punch in those details and understand yeah. what the 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 capable image is going to look like. Uh, mm -hmm. Me, I, I stand them up and then zoom in to see what it looks like because I'm not that yep. cool. Um, so there was a another question about NDI capability inside the camera. So you do now have an NDI camera. I mean, I don't think we talked about, it, but that's in the the traditional PTZ line, correct? That is correct. So the, where am I at? So the PTZ line, the 330, 310, 330N, right? These guys also support um, NDI. So those are NDI out of the box, so that covers that part of it. Um, yep. Is there any thought to that coming to the tracking cameras? There is. So we, we do have, um, some new cameras coming out is, and uh, we're very close to release, but um, you know, details. Nice, all right, so stay tuned on that one, folks. Stay tuned, if yeah. Uh, if you are in the mood for a uh, PTZ camera with NDI, yeah. um, obviously plenty of there. Um, higher education institutions are asking for tractor, oh, tractor cameras with, oh, with, um, with a, oh, hold on. Uh, I'm trying to read a question here and my system is not showing me the whole thing. Uh, oh, that was related to the NDI one. Okay, so uh, so the big question is um, from this one was, who's asking for tracking cameras? Where do you guys see the biggest market for it right now? Well, that's a good question. Um, it's, it's coming from many, uh, directions right um so, uh, rich let me see if you can yeah. take this uh yeah this andy um from Avery as well so uh we are seeing a tremendous amount of interest uh, coming from higher education obviously but more so also on the k-12 side um as schools are struggling to open up and and you know going with a with a hybrid model right where maybe you have a teacher in in front of a class with half the student body, right? Maybe half would be at home, half would be in, in classroom. That they would need, um, they're looking into some kind of a tracking cameras, um, you know, that that's what will fit into a typical, you know, high school, middle school classrooms. Uh, we're seeing a tremendous amount of interest in that. Um, obviously, a lot of the K-12 directors are still, you know, working out the, the kings of details on how to implement that. But I think the, the TR camera uh, does fit that need uh, pretty well in this scenario. We're also seeing a lot of uh, needs coming from churches uh, where, you know, typically typically you, you need to be able to uh, operate with a skeleton crew of a production crew, right? So you want to be able to automate this whole process. Uh, so the TR cameras would, would also come into play as well. Uh, as well as, uh, a lot of uh, home-based instruction, um, you know, maybe a one-man show, you, if maybe a, a yoga instructor, you're doing a home-based uh, cooking show, you know, you want to be able to put this camera in there 
and to be able to track you as you move about the kitchen, move about, you know, doing your activities. Uh, we're seeing some, some, you know, fair amount of uh, interest in that area as well. So, so um, another question that popped up was um, about using this at, in a conference room environment, um, you know, with eight or 12 people at a table size um, for the tracking aspect of it. And so I think from that perspective, because the tracking is built on motion, most people sit a little bit still at a table. So this really, really wouldn't be a huddle space or a conference space to do the auto tracking. Is that is that how you guys would see it? That is correct. I think uh, that need would be more on the voice or speaker tracking system, right? You know, uh, such as the ones that you you, you see in in a, in a Polycom uh, voice tracking system. What what we have here is a speaker tracking system where it is tracks your face, it tracks your your the person, instead of you know, be able to triangulate where the voice is coming from. Uh, so for for that kind of application, you would go with uh, more of a voice activated uh, PDC camera. So. Right. Um, we, uh, so there was a question about being doing iMag in front of a direct view wall. And I think that goes to the other tracking settings where we're doing the um, zone tracking or the stage tracking. Um, rather than face tracking, we're looking at motion of the larger block um, and setting up spaces to move to. Um, so that's how you would use this in an iMag environment in front of a, a video wall. Um, yeah, that's good there. Um, there was a, que um, it's a question about multiple subjects, um, tracking, dealing with uh, multiple people standing in front of the wall. But, um, either of you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, uh, Rich, you can go back to the TR interface real quick. Here. Yeah, the tracking interface. So you want to talk about the multi-presenter uh, mechanism that we have here, please? Sure. Turn this off here. So we do have a multi-presenter, right? Uh, so if you're having more than one person speaking, um, the idea is that you would select a zone. So similar to how we drew the blue box, now we're drawing an orange box. Um, so you're, you're defining an area of where you will have more than one person. So that when one person comes in the box and another one leaves, leaves, um, the camera doesn't start tracking that person. So keep the frame of reference or the object here for tracking is what we're we're saying here. Um, I know I think I mentioned this before, you know, we have some certain presets that are kind of reserved. So when we're in segment mode, it's presets six, seven, eight, and nine, depending on how many blocks. Same idea is true with uh, multi-presenter and even single presenter, where if if track, so preset one and preset two are, are kind of saved for if the tracking should happen to get lost, it'll go to preset one. And then when you're multi-presenter, right, uh, there's a time delay before returning to preset number two. So you can set up, so for instance, something should get, you know, there was a glare, a flare or something, some lighting change and the camera got a little bit lost. It'll wait a couple seconds for your configuration before returning to preset number two. A question came in while we're doing this, which was, does anybody have to wear a transmitter to use this? And I, I'm not, a, not at all. No, this is purely transmitter list because it is looking at face and then it's looking at body yes. and motion. So yep. Where's the activity going? No lanyard needed, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, guys, um, a good client had asked about the optics in this. What uh, What is the sensor in your camera? Is it using the Sony's or Panasonic's or? It's the X or? We, we use uh, so Sony uh, sensor. Is it the Sony? Yeah, Sony. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there was question to mounting. I think we, we kind of went through that one. There is mounts. So the for the whether or not they can be flipped upside down, only the traditional PTZs, not the auto tracking. Auto tracking have to be kept upright, and there is Correct. mounts available um, that um, for yeah. however you're going to install it. Yep, yeah. that's what the mount looks like for a ceiling or wall for the TR. The facial recognition. So this is recognizing the face, but it is not differentiating between people. So we can't tag one as you know, right? Nick, but ignore Rich. 
Um, it's it's going to follow who's moving effectively. Yeah, it's face zone. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, it's face detect, not face recognition, not right. facial recognition. Yeah. Um, and then guys, have you had anybody take these into live sporting applications? I'm not sure. I maybe Andy, have you heard anything like this? Um, I, mean, it's, I know it's, it's mostly an in indoor. But... Yeah. Uh, I think I would say depending on the type of live sporting, you know, like if, if, if it's a um, more of a, you know. If, if let's say you're, you're doing a basketball a basketball game, it's probably not a good fit for that because you you, you know you have a lot of people on on the, on the court and you know, things like that. So who are you going to track in a sense? Um, definitely, if it's a single competition, you know, event, um, you know, um, there, there could be a, some 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 need for for these kind of cameras. And then, uh, somebody asked, so I've got the um, the TR530 folks. So people were asking what my camera is on this side. It is the TR series, the tracking one. Yeah, the 530. Yeah, yeah. the 530 gives you the more uh, tracking modes, a little more optical zoom. And, and that's the one I'm at. I have here is the 530. Um, okay, so a, a great question. Let's see. Can can cam one and cam two, or can can you have cameras track different people on the same stage? So if we had two different cameras up, could we have them each focusing on a different person and tracking that person, or would they at some point cross each other? That's a so good you think question. We have two two, uh, two cameras set up, right? Yep. Yeah. So you would set up camera one to track person one, camera two to track person two. So that's that's entirely doable. Yeah. Okay. So it's utilizing uh, the zones and the uh, and the, the specific subject. Yep. So each one would have its own uh, configuration and setup. So. Yeah. All right. Um, there's a great question here about power. Uh, do any of these support PoE? So yeah, I mentioned before. So the TR530 does not support PoE, but the PTZ series does. Uh, okay. POE plus, yeah. So the PT series. PT yeah, series so will, TR will not. Correct. So this guy, POE. Uh, no. Not POE there. OK. Oh. Yeah, so somebody was looking to replace an older Vadio system that was just run over Cat5 cables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they would have to. Get local power if so. So Jason, if you wanted um, auto tracking the way we're showing it here, um, you'd have to get local power to the camera um, or look at converting one of those cables. Let's see. Um, are there safety? Um, so they were looking for any kind of um, control over fine tuning the 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 subtle shifts it sees. Like uh, right there, mine just kind of took a little bit higher. Can we fine tune that to get less movement out of the camera once it's honed in on the subject? You could perhaps, you know, there are uh, sensitivity adjustments for motion. Okay. So there's a motion sensitivity here. Um, so if you feel it's too sensitive, you can just throttle it down. Or if you feel it's not enough, you can bring it up. So we have this range here of zero to seven. Yeah, so I just cranked mine way down and it's, oh yeah, it's taking its dear sweet time to decide if it wants to move. It's like, hold on, he moved. Should we think about it? Wait about it? Okay, yeah. there it goes. Did he yeah, move? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was a question to the DC input. Does it have a locking connector? Or what's the, the plug? So for the PoE one, on the on the PT range, great for the TR. Does that yeah, lock in place? It does not lock. No, it's, it's a push in barrel connector. Yep. Uh, let's see. And then a question about live streaming with multiple PTZs. So they all feed into a single hub. So for live streaming, folks, that's where you would be looking at 
if you've got multiple cameras, you're going to need to look at like Wirecast or VMix or TriCast or, or some switcher to bring all those cameras mm -hmm. in and decide what your audience is going to see. Um, sure. So you definitely, if you're if you're looking for more than one cam, then you're going to need a switcher sitting behind those. Uh, let's see, safety modes, POE. Ah, looks like we're rolling through. Questions are flying in. <laughs> functional range. David, I'm not, so there was a question is what is the functional range for the tracking camera? I'm, uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by functional range, if it's in terms of like distance or. Distance, kind of yeah. sounds like distance. Um, I mean, yeah, well, Again, you know, I mean, definitely, and what, I guess one of the ones I do prefer about this is uh, you can come up nice and close to the camera, you know, even though I'm, I'm out of that wide angle shot. Um, yeah. Still, you got you got a lot of range because the camera. Actually, we we almost spun the camera around backwards. It's, I guess <laughs> the range is going to be determined on the wide angle view. If you step out of that wide angle view, then the camera can't track you beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. If that's what he means. Yeah. Oh, okay. He was asking about distance. What is the the maximum distance? So, because it's facial track or face tracking, um, it, then it's going to be based on whether or not it can pick the face out, um, and that's where there's those different options that we were talking about before. That as you get farther away from the camera, it can't differentiate your face, so it needs to look at the whole body and utilize the zones and those other tracking modes. So there's wide area, stage, and segment. Those different tracking modes to kind of reflect the distance that you are from the camera. Oh, I yep. like the sensitivity on this one being down. It's uh, it, it, it's not. It, it is definitely not jumping on me as much. But I cranked it all the way down to one. Uh, let's see what happens if I bring it up to about a two here. I'm being able to play with these things in real time. It's so much more fun. Um, <laughs> church. Uh, so um, and specifically, he was speaking to a church application from about a 70 foot distance. So at 70 feet, um, you're probably not going to get as uh, as much face recognition as you are segment or body recognition. Would yeah. Yes. So what happens in segment is, um, so like you're in wide area because you have the depth, but once we switch over to stage or segment, oops, stage or segment, you lose the depth, right? Because it's based on your facial, on face detect. So wide area, you get the face detect where you walk towards the camera, it'll tilt down. But in stage, and if it's at that distance, well, it's hard to say, but more than likely someone will not be walking towards the camera, right? I mean, into the crowd that far, but. Right. Um, but we have had installations of 60 feet, 65 feet, and uh, it'd be, we need to get more data as far as you know the diminishing rate of returns as far as you know is 80 feet fine or is 100 feet fine you know so definitely yeah, um, I, I think i think ultimately also depending on the local lighting condition you know if it's yeah well um mm -hmm. and and reach and you show these this chart kind of yeah you know, at 100 feet um so imagine between the 22 times or 30 times. Um, you, the, the good algorithm is, you know, you, you, you want the face to be on the screen about an inch and a half uh, wide across to be able to get a good face face recognition uh, done. Um, so I think 70 feet, uh, it could work. Um, you know, we have uh, demo programs available. Um, we'd be happy to you know, should be you guys a demo unit, you know, try it out and see if it works in, in a local environment. So. Absolutely. Um, there was, let's see. Oh, um, any capability of managing leading, um, you know, the camera leading with it when the character is moving. So if somebody turns out this way, keeping the camera sort of, you know, farther in front, obviously. Um, is there any ability to adjust that, um, you know, the that motion? Or is that going to be to the sensitivity? I think it's a combo of sensitivity and the pan speed. Um, yeah, at the moment, there's no uh, 
configuration or setting that you could do. Uh, but it's 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 a good feedback. Uh, we'll we'll uh, probably you know take this into a, back to an engineering team to figure out if there's there's a way to, you know, uh, have more more settings available right for different scenarios. Uh, it, it's always a, a, a you know a struggle. Uh, to get something out that's simple to, to to configure, you know, in five minutes versus having too many options, right? So, but those are those are good feedbacks. Yeah. All right. I think that is about the run of it. Um, if we didn't answer your question to the uh, as good as you wanted, by all means, uh, send us an email. Uh, let's see how easy are these to install uninstall for mobile applications or they just permanent installs okay there's a question that just popped in how easy are these to install uninstall for mobile applications or are they just for permanent installs so um i actually have mine on a tripod at the back of the room at the highest that tripod well it's actually a light stand with a quarter 20 on the top but it's mounted on a stand uh, where you can drop it in and take it out at a moment's notice. So these are you know, relatively quick to set up. Um, they are web-based GUI for doing the fine tuning. So as you can see here from Riches, you just jump onto the web GUI. So you bring your camera, you bring a small network switch, you log into the camera, adjust your settings and you're up and running. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty easy and quick to go for mobile applications. Drop it in a coffee shop, get a quick concert going. Sky's the limits. Uh, I think, ah, here we go. Okay, one, one really great one. So when a new presenter comes on stage and the previous person leaves, will the tracking follow the new presenter? Now, there's a couple ways to do this. We've tested with it on our own and it's a lot of fun. It actually chased one of my salespeople through the office one day and followed her until she hid behind a refrigerator and then grabbed the next person up. So what is the proper change of presenter operation uh, in, you know, in somebody being tracked? Yeah, good point. Um, well, I, Andy, I think this Andy is yeah. in the orange box. Yeah, so you know the best way to handle this is uh, to turn on multi presenter, right? So reach kind of show us and draw a little box for that. And if the system detects you know more than one person within that box, then do preset two, which it may could be a zoom out completely zoom out view, so you see everybody, right? And then you could set it such that if the second third person were to leave and you're back to the single presenter, it will go back to the single presenter tracking again. So it's those are the settings you have right at the bottom, right? So time delay before returning to preset two, time delay before returning to single presenter tracking. So those are some of the settings you have, um, you know, associated with the multi presenter. So. All right, there was a, so it can be done. It can be done. So ideally, if, you, if you're walking in and out of the box and it's gonna to know to come back to the box. Um, okay, and then last one, uh, let's see. Uh, can you control the camera remotely from a different location? So as long as you have a VPN um, available or a way to get onto the network that the camera is on, then yes. Um, you yeah. can control it, you know, from outside the office. You get, you can view the live stream like uh, Rich is seeing on his screen here and manage it. But you would need to have that network connectivity, so you'd need to have a VPN set up that allows you onto that network from a remote distance. Um, but and there's lots of ways to achieve that. And then there was a question for Wi-Fi for the GUI control. So it's wired to the network. And then of course you can do wireless after that, but you you are wired ethernet cable to get the camera onto the network. Wireless after that, no problem. Uh, I'm actually wireless on my laptop over here that I'm controlling it on. Yeah. All right. Sounds like somebody yeah, keep else it. had one out there and they were playing with it and <laughs> popping questions as they had one. That's fine. Yeah, okay. That's I good. Love it. Um, yeah, for those that may, may be questioning, I mean, this video that you're seeing here obviously is a, a stream from the camera. Uh, so th what you're seeing here is going to be lesser quality than what's actually being um, being put out on the SDI or HDMI. Um, so what 
what you see with with Nick's view here. That's is that HDMI? Is that? Um, I am coming in over SDI. So SDI, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm so you can definitely see a quality difference between you know what you're seeing with Nick compared to what you're seeing here with the web interface. Right. Just you know, make that clear. Some people have questions about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or comments. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, we're going to call this one in the box. We're past our hour, but that's the way we yeah. roll around here. We're willy-nilly about your time. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping most of you are starting to venture out and get outdoors and meet with clients and start to find applications for these. As always, um, you've got our contact details. Uh, Rich tossed his out there earlier, uh, and, or just email the team and we'll get you connected. We can set up with demos. And Rich, thanks for being here. I really appreciate okay. it. Having you. My pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Andy, thanks for hanging on the line with us and answering the tough questions when Rich and I feel like we're, uh, yeah. we're, we're at our limit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to call this one done. Uh, if you missed it, watch the replay. It should be available in about 24 hours or so. All right. Thanks again, gentlemen. Laura, go ahead and call it.